Hello everyone. Welcome to AI Anytime channel. In this video, we are going to see a small Docklink, an ultra compact open source vision language model for document understanding or for document conversion. So basically in layman terms, it can perform OCR. Okay. Nowadays, we are seeing a lot of OCR model, optical character recognition. Mistral released their uh, their model as, a, as an API service for OCR that was performing really well. And now we have an open source model called a small docklink. So a small docklink is fully available on Hugging Face, so anybody can use it. And it's really small in size at just uh, around 256 million parameters, if I'm not wrong. And it can uh, do better OCR than Mistral. And I can show you that, you know, if you have seen my Mistral uh, video, Mistral OCR video, I'll take the same image and we'll try to see how better it is, right? So uh, let's have a look here. So if you look at here on my screen, I'm on small docklink. Uh, hugging face repository it says small docklink 256 million preview and you know uh, it has a multimodal image to text model designed for efficient document conversion it retains docklink's most popular features while ensuring full compatibility with docklink through seamless support for docklink documents now that's fantastic because you know it's really small in size 256 million params you can see it over here 256 million params uh you know it it, it it has something called doc tags which is a universal markup format you know that preserves the content you know with their location you know so if you have worked with computer vision kind of a thing you will understand this a bit better if you have trained model with bounding boxes and whatnot which is a bit a bit different so the doc tags is a bit different in how the documents are preserved it's a it's a it's a markup format you know for for that now they use that if you look at here they say they say doc tags for efficient tokenization that's fantastic right now it can handle tables code equations and bunch of other things and i know if you can find it out over below here that says a table recognition you no know, chart recognition the formula recognitions and whatnot I work across different document types like you know you have your business docs academic papers technical reports and so on and so forth it works across the uh, uh, thing Lightning fast. It can process a single page of a single image or a page or a scan document in less than a second, like you know, maybe like 0 0.3 seconds. That's what I read in the documentation. You can see it over here. But that on 800 GPUs. So I don't have a GPU, but I'll show you. I, I'll, I'll show you this Streamlit app that we have built. And of course, the code will be available on GitHub. So you can just go and uh, start using it. And you can have a look have a look at their roadmap as well they are working on better chart recognition one sort multi-page inference chemical recognitions as well and their data sets now that's fantastic right because it's smaller in size like just imagine having a model with 256 million params and that can perform ocr which is one of the most complex thing to do when it comes to uh huge cases that we are trying to solve now let me show you what it can do so if you look at here I have a have an app that I built called Small Docklink OCR app. You know, you have something over here. You can see available tasks, convert pages to Docklink. Doc, I will not show you everything. I'll give this on GitHub. You can go and play around it. Convert table tables to OTSL, converts code snippets to text, formulas to LaTeX. So if you are writing research paper, that will also help you over there. You know, convert charts to OTSL, extract section headers and whatnot, right? So that's it. Uh, you can look at here, convert this page, so whatever page I'm uploading to Docklink, convert this table to OTSL, convert code to text. I don't have a document support right now. I'm just doing with image, but you can again uh, do it with document as well. The code is available on their Hugging Face repository. So for example, if I just take an image, and this is the same image that I took when I created the video for Mr. OCR. So you can even find it, find out that if you go to AI anytime GitHub repository, you can find out in this repository i'll show you mr ocr app so if you come here you will see the same uh, image that we took and here we also built an app and you can see it's also you can just go and start using it a uh, very simple to use a very good documentation over here and similarly we are going to do it for a small dockling as well so a small dockling they have a small agent so hugging face is like uh, we are seeing a lot of things on that agent side as well that's a different uh, framework to work with AI agents, but here in a small docling, when you click on process image, it says processing image, and it will show you the doc tags, and then it will show you the output, which is the real output that you want to extract. You, know, you want to extract some information. This image is a medical prescription, 
Uh, I think it's written through hand and then it's scanned through some kind of things. And by the way, guys, I don't have GPUs and all. That's why it's taking a lot of time in this machine that I'm using right now to create this video. Uh, it's running on a CPU machine that takes around two minutes, a minute to two to kind of extract this. But if you have a better, uh, better infra, you know, to deal with, if you have a better compute, it will be even faster. On a A100 GPU, if you are trying to run this on Google Colab, for example, on A100 or any other A100 GPU on AWS or RunPod or wherever, the average time that it takes is uh, half of a second, right? That's that's how fast it is. Meanwhile, it's happening. Let me go through the code to show you. Now, I am I have used UV to create uh, in a slice of project. Uh, that project name is Small Dockling, and then I've created a virtual environment. If you look at the left hand side, and then I have uh, when you do UV init project, it creates a pyproject.2ml file uh, where you have all your dependencies and everything. You can see it over here, you know, dependencies, Python, blah, 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 torch, transformer, stimulate. And then I have my main.py. Now in main.py, we are importing transformers and everything and looking at if dockling is available and whatnot, checking the dependencies over here. So these are like basic things. Now here we have a function that says process single image takes image as an input and has a prompt text convert this page to dockling okay you can even enhance this and then looking at cpu and whatnot start time blah 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 just to find out how much time it's taking and here we are using auto processor uh, to get the processor and auto model for vision to sequence for the vlm the vision language model to uh, fetch it uh, to download the weights small dockling 256 million preview dodge type torch flow 32 blah 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 and whatnot right now you have here create input message you can see it over here like this is how the structure is you are passing an image text and passing this prompt text which can take it and then it's apply a chat template you know from processor and it's generate the output you can see it over here if I encode and then we decode over here you have max new tokens blah 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 and then it clean the output you see it you just doc text dot replace end of utterances every uh, tags that it has it will have end of utterances as a token and then populate the document it creates a docling document if you have worked with docling ever uh, uh, that's also fantastic right and then it export as markdown and you can see how much time it takes and the return the doc text markdown content and processing time and these are basic stimulate thing guys where we just have uh, you know uploaders and whatnot right and and using that function we are using that function over here. You can see process single image. That's what it is. Now I'll just go back and you can see it over here. Fantastic, right? We have the, these are the doc text output that you see. It says extracted doc text. And in the right hand side, we have the markdown output. You can see DOD prescriptions. And this is where I'll show you where Mistral got it wrong. Mistral called this Peladona. If you look at that video now, but this has got it right. It's a Belladonna, which is like a if I'm not wrong, which is a herb, and of course they turned it into a medicine. And this is fantastic. I really liked it, guys. You know, if you if you expand this, right? And if I can make this a bit bigger for you to see it, it has here Belladonna M4 gel, and you can see this not that good quality, but even though it it able to uh, get it from that, so this is a very good image to kind of find out how good quality it is. Then you can see it, it took around a minute, almost two minutes, processing completed in two minutes. And it basically gives you everything and you can download the markdown. If I download right now, it should refresh the page. I think I'm not handling session, but we can do that. But I'm not downloading it. You can probably do a pull request and uh, use the stimulate session state to handle multiple, because these are nested, right? Buttons are, uh, it, like it refreshes the page if you don't handle the state. So this is how it is, guys. Simple. I'll give the code so you can just go and start uh, using it. You can, of course, enhance this project further if you want to enhance. And let me know your thoughts on Mistral API for OCR versus small dockling OCR, right? Which one you prefer? Because I don't think that eventually we will need any closed source models to perform OCR. I think the better models will be open source, smaller in size, like this, for example. And that can do really good. I, I think that will be really equivalent in the performance outputs when you compare that with closed source model. I'll keep this video short, guys. I don't want to like go and write the code. It doesn't make any sense, right? Most of you are Vive coders, if I'm not wrong, right? People are turning to Vive coders and you can see I'm also using Windsurf. 
but I haven't used completely Windsor to code it, but I have used it to uh, get the skeleton and all, and then made some changes on top of it. So I'll give this code repo on my GitHub repository. Uh, you can go and fork it and start working with it. If you have any questions, thoughts, or feedbacks, let me know in the comment box. You can also reach out to me through my social media channels. Find those information on channel banner and channel about us. If you like the content, please hit the like icon. If you haven't subscribed the channel yet, please do subscribe the channel, guys. That motivates me to create more such videos. Thank you so much for watching. See you in the next one.